Uh, but the first thing we should probably do is just figure out uh, how many peaks there's going to be in a molecule. Um, so the first principle for this is um, if hydrogens have the same connectivity, then they're going to have the same peak. They're going to be equivalent. So let's write down these slogans and we'll look at some examples to see how this works. The same connectivity means they're probably equivalent. There are some exceptions, but those are a little bit advanced. Uh, sometimes courses don't really cover those, so uh, we'll just start by uh, assuming that same connectivity usually means equivalent, and different connectivity definitely means non-equivalent. So let's, let's, uh, let's start looking at some examples here. So for example, suppose we have methane. How many peaks would this show? Four. Ten. Now what we have to decide is whether these hydrogens are equivalent to each other or different. Um, all of these hydrogens are equivalent to each other. They all have the same connectivity because all of them are connected to a, you have one peak. That's right. So four hydrogens, but you'll still only have one peak. Uh, because even though you have four different hydrogens, they're all going to be on the same spot, so you only see one peak. That's basically yes. right, yes. And how would we know that there were four hydrogens versus one hydrogen? That would be a, a, a different set of clues that we'll get to later. Oh, okay. All right, um, so, um, for, uh, so far we haven't learned how to tell how many hydrogens there are. All we're trying to learn right now is how to predict the number of peaks. Well, this would give us one peak, so the spectrum would look kind of like this. And you can see what I mean by the same connectivity maybe here. Each of these hydrogens is connected to a carbon that's connected to three other hydrogens. So they, they all are in the same connected environment. That means they're definitely, uh, uh, and that means that they're going to be uh, equivalent. So, um, is like a CH bond high, absorbs in high magnetic field? Uh, that's, tr that's true, although I don't want to get into the details of why that is here yet. Right now, let's, let's just deal with one clue at a time. So, uh, I put this here to be accurate, but all I want to emphasize is give you one peak. Let's just focus on the number of peaks. Because there's actually a whole bunch of different pieces of information that we're going to have to learn to decipher, so we'll have to go through them one by one. All right, so that would have been one peak. How about ethane? How many peaks would this give us? One. These are still all equivalent. They still all have the same connectivity. Each of the hydrogens is connected to a, uh, is connected to a carbon that has two hydrogens and it's also connected to a methyl group. So they all have the same exact connectivity. So this again would give us one peak. Even though there's six hydrogens, as somebody said, they'd all be absorbing in the same place. So it would just look like one peak. So we're still just focusing on predicting the number of peaks. Okay? Same connectivity, probably equivalent. How many peaks here? Two. Now there's two peaks. Uh, by the way, a very useful technique now is to start lettering the equivalent hydrogens. So we could say these are all in the A group, and these are in the B group, and then what group would these be in, A, B, or C? A. a. We don't need to invent a new letter C because these are equivalent to the first one. So this is a very important technique in interpreting spectra, labeling the equivalent hydrogens. This is something you have to do on pretty much any problem. Uh, one of the first steps is to try to label the equivalent hydrogens. So that one would look roughly like this. I'm not going to talk about why one is higher than the other right now. I just want to point out there would be two different peaks here. Uh, it turns out that this would be the A and this would be the B. 
Uh, well, you can kind of already guess why it is, because there's more hydrogens here than there are over here. That's, uh, so well, we won't get into that too much now, but this is how you figure out how many hydrogens there are behind each peak, the height of the peak. Okay, and so notice not only um, if you're writing down the compound, you want to label, you want to letter the hydrogens in the compound. And then when you're working with the spectrum, you try to letter each peak. You try to, try to letter each peak with the letter that corresponds here. That's the basic way that you decipher what the spectrum means when you're doing problems. Okay, so again, same connectivity equivalent. Uh, but this, these hydrogens are on a carbon with different connectivity, so they were different from the other two sets. Okay, good. How many peaks here? Two. Yeah, two peaks. So this would be A, B, B, A. Two different peaks. How many peaks here? Two. So this would be the A. This would be the B. Now, this is a different group because it's on a carbon with different connectivity. For example, these hydrogens are on a carbon that's one uh, that is connected to a methyl. But these hydrogens are not on a carbon that's connected to a methyl. So when we say the same connectivity, we mean can the same connectivity taking the entire molecule into account. If there's any difference in the connectivity, if you take the entire molecule into account, they're going to have different absorptions. So that's something I don't think I made clear before. So again, this carbon over here is connected. Uh, these hydrogens, uh, so the B hydrogens are on a carbon that's connected to a methyl and to a secondary. But these hydrogens are on a carbon that's connected to two secondaries. So those are not the same connectivities. So those would be different. Different connectivity means they're, they're definitely three. not equivalent. Sorry? Three. That's right. So I think this is how you would label in this case. So notice, just because two uh, sets of hydrogens are both on CH, just because they're both on CH2s doesn't mean they're equivalent. In fact, you usually very often get a lot of CH2s that are different. Okay, so that would be our three peaks. So here we have hexane. How many peaks would we have here for hexane? Naive students might think that these two are equivalent, but they're not because this one is closer to the end than this one. Uh, but these two are equivalent because this Wait, is... Wait, not closer to the end, but because it's attached to a methyl and a CH2? Well, that's another way of saying it's closer to the end. Um, if one of them is closer to the end, it has to have different connectivity. Oh. If you're attached to a methyl, then you're right at the end. Okay. Right, a methyl has to be at the end. So there are two different ways of saying the same thing. All right, but these two over here are on carbons with the same connectivity. Because uh, this carbon is attached to uh, two carbons to the left and three carbons to the right. And this one's attached to two carbons to the, the right and three to the left. Well, left and right doesn't make any difference. They have the same connectivity. Okay, so that would give us three peaks here. Good. All right, again, the big point here is that just because hydrogens are all on CH2s doesn't mean that they're not equivalent to each other. All right, so we were going through an important idea here, which is that this is on a CH2 and this is on a CH2, but they're still not equivalent because this CH2 has got a different connectivity than the other. So let's say... The CH3 at the right end was connected to a, was a bromine instead of CH3? Mm -hmm. That's a good question. Like this. Yeah. How many sets of equivalent hydrogens do we have here? How many peaks would we get here? This is hexane. Four. This is hexane with a bromine on one end. And the answer is now each of the sets of hydrogens on each carbon is different. So there'd be six. One, two, three, four, five, and six. These two hydrogens are equivalent to each other 
uh, because they're both on the same carbon. But they're different from this hydrogen uh, because this carbon is one carbon away from the bromine. This carbon is two carbons away from the bromine. This is three carbons. So they're all on carbons with different connectivity. So the only hydrogens that are equivalent here are the ones that are on the same carbon. The only hydrogens that are equivalent here are the ones that are on the same carbon. But the thing that happened here is that when you put in the bromine, we lost the symmetry. When we put in the bromine, we lost the symmetry. Up here, the left and the right ends were basically the same. So it didn't matter whether you were one carbon away from the left end or one carbon away from the right end. You were still at the same connectivity. But now there's a big difference between being one carbon away from the right and one carbon from the left. So now we get six different peaks. All right, so that would definitely be an important example. How many peaks here? One, because all of the hydrogens here are equivalent to each other. So there would only be one peak here. 